For a closer look at all things general election, we're joined now by Associate Professor Eugene Tan from the School of Law at Singapore Management University. Eugene, it's good to see you this evening. Eugene, with this coming election, we could see a record number of 12 opposition parties pit themselves against the PAP this time around. What's your sense of the kind of strategy that opposition parties are taking in terms of choosing just which wards to contest in? Don, I, I, parties will certainly try to hit back to the constituencies that they contested in uh, in the last general election in 2015. Uh, and, and this is a good example would be the Singapore Democratic Party, hitting back to the five uh, constituencies that they contested in. Um, another approach that the parties you know, will attempt you know, would be to try to resolve uh, the, the overlapping or conflicting claims um, to avoid uh, three-way contests. Um, I think this is something which uh, the parties will be working on very hard uh, and it's important, you know, in terms of the deciding, you know, where each party is and test, you know, they should resolve this um, and as soon as possible and certainly before a nomination day. Um, but when you look at the, the party's, uh, you know, overall strategy in terms of where they want to contest, I think there is also... Um, an attempt to moderate their expectations. Uh, I think Workers' Party uh, and Singapore People's Party would be a good example. So Workers' Party is contesting only in 21 seats down from 28. Uh, and, and Singapore People's Party, they're just contesting in two constituencies, uh, Pishan Topayo and, and Potong Pase. Uh, and and you know, we, we know of uh, Singapore First Party uh, you know, dissolving uh, itself. Um, so I think, you know, Things are, are hotting up um, but, and the parties are, have to work hard uh, you know, in ensuring that all seats will be contested and to reduce uh, any three-way contests. Yeah, speaking of that, some opposition parties appear to be trying to avoid three-cornered fights only to see others join the fray. To give you one example, uh, Marymount SMC, which is attracting the PSP and the DPP and both PSP and the Reform Party, Aung Yochu Kang, uh, what's the draw of these particular wards? Well, they are they are new constituencies, right? Um, and, and so the, the 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 sense that you know there are no prior claims, you know, no party has a prior claim, uh, you know, to that constituency, you know, is something that uh, parties are, are asserting, um, and and so you know, there's also the sense that the incumbent, uh, because it's a new constituency would have less of an advantage. Uh, and so that makes for these uh, single member constituency seats you know, becoming even more popular. I, I think you know, there is enough seats for, for every party, um, but not enough you know, for every party's ego and, and, and inflated expectations. Uh, but I think many of these con uh, conflicting claims you know, will be resolved uh, in the days ahead. Uh, I, I think parties know that it is not to their advantage you know, to have a three-way fight. You know, the, the record from previous elections, you know, show that the party that finishes third or, or lower, uh, you know, has a very good chance of losing the election deposit. Um, but you, you see these parties resolving it. So I think, you know, Progress Singapore Party and Reform Party had earlier clashed over West Coast GRC, uh, but Reform Party has now, uh, you know, conceded uh, the, 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 con uh, the, the seat, you know, to, to Progress Singapore Party. Um, but I think, you know, we were less likely to see three-way fights uh, in seats which are uh, contested by uh, either the, the, the Workers' Party or the Progress Singapore Party. Eugene, let's talk about GRCs specifically. It's a big prize in any general election for any party to nab a GRC. And in this one, we know that SPP, uh, DPP, they, they've both expressed interest in the downsized Bishan Tuapayo GRC, and then you've got the five-member Pasiris Pungal GRC, which could see SDA coming back, as well as People's Voice. This will be their first election that they'll be contesting in. They'll be vying for votes. What could a three-way contest for a big GRC mean for the incumbent PAP? In, in many respects, you know, I, I don't think it, it makes their fight um, any easier. All right, because you are going to have, uh, you know, their main concern would be the margin of victory. Certainly, you know, it, it will make it easier in, in the sense that, you know, it will split uh, the opposition vote. 
But I think, you know, where voters uh, can clearly identify one of the opposition party to be stronger than the other, again, you know, uh, looking at prior uh, elections, uh, voters have tended, you know, to, to put their support behind uh, the, part, the, the opposition party that they regard to be stronger. Uh, you know, so in that sense, you know, there is not that much uh, splitting of the vote. The voters are very savvy. You know, they know that if they were to split the vote, you know, that reduces the possibility, uh, you know, of an opposition party, uh, you know, winning the, the, the seat. Um, so I suppose, you know, for the ruling party, a uh, three-way contest, you know, would suit them very well. Uh, and so, you know, parties will certainly try to avoid a three-way contest. Okay, many thanks for your thoughts this evening. As always, we, I'm sure we'll be chatting to you over the week, the few weeks to come as well. Associate Professor Eugene Tan from the School of Law at Singapore Management University.